Thank you for choosing Canada. We're so glad you're part of our country, what it is today, and what it will be tomorrow as we build it together. Congratulations, Canadians, and welcome home. Today, we're gathered on the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Canada today remains home to many First Nations people. They continue to play an important role in Canada's development and future. We're grateful to be living and working on these lands. So we have 105 people from 21 different countries gathered here waiting to become Canadian citizens. For some of you, the journey from your home country to this room may have been a simple one, but for others of you, it will have been a longer and more complicated journey. You have all been getting acclimatized to a new culture, literally a new climate. Some of you have had to learn a new language, maybe two. At the same time, you've been working or studying or both, and alongside that, building a home for yourselves and your families. It takes a remarkable combination of hope, fortitude and hard work to build a life in a new country. You should all be proud of what you've achieved, and as you sit here waiting to take this last step to become Canadian citizens, I can only say that I'm privileged to be here to share this moment with you. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms represents those shared values. The values that Canadians consider essential to living in a free and democratic country. Along with your responsibilities and your rights, sorry, along with your rights also come your responsibilities. Chief amongst those, you are responsible for obeying the law, for taking responsibility for yourselves and your families. This year, 2019 actually marks the 50th anniversary of the Official Languages Act of Canada. This is the statute that enshrines your right to be dealt with in the language of your choosing whenever you have dealings with the federal government. Bilingualism is an important Canadian value and I'd encourage you all to take advantage of whatever opportunities you have to learn both of Canada's official languages. Fidel, Fidel. Epotre, Epotre. Sancé à la Géance, à, à Sa Majesté, à Sa Majesté. La Reine, la Reine. Elizabeth II, Elizabeth II. 
Canada. Then to Canada. As a senator. As a senator. As you said, sir. As you said, sir. Que j'observerai. Que j'observerai. Fidèlement. Fidèlement. La loi du Canada. La loi du Canada. Et que. Et que. Je romperai. Je romperai. Loyalement. Loyalement. Mes obligations. Mes obligations. Des citoyens. Des citoyens. Canadiens. Canadiens. I swear. I swear that I will be faithful. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to Her Majesty. To Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II. Queen of Canada. Queen of Canada. Her heirs. Her heirs. And successors. And successors. And that I will. And that I will faithfully observe. Faithfully observe the laws of Canada. The laws of Canada. And fulfill my duties as a Canadian citizen. As a Canadian citizen. Congratulations to you all. My last few words today are addressed to the children and the younger people in the room, of which we have many. We have statisticians, art historians, nurses, psychologists, drivers. <coughs> people emigrate from their home countries for many reasons. It's undoubtedly true that there are as many reasons for being in Canada as there are families here today. The thing that's universally true, though, is that those of us who are parents wish for a brighter future for our children. So to that end, you will be hearing, and you will already have heard throughout your childhoods, no doubt, your parents telling you that you have to work hard, you have to strive, you have to get good grades. And this is all really good advice, of which I'm sure many of you already have taken to heart. I'm going to ask you, though, to do one extra thing. I'm going to ask you to make time in your school lives, in your study lives, for creative work, for art. I'm going to invite you to sing songs, maybe have a go at writing a song, to draw pictures, to write stories. Firstly, except for those Canadians with Indigenous, Métis or Inuit roots, the rest of us, we trace our roots to outside of Canada. That means when you're studying history in school, when you're reading about iconic Canadians, bear in mind that much of that history is the history of the immigrants that came before us. And those iconic Canadians, many of them were immigrants themselves or the children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren of immigrants. What does that mean for you as someone born outside of Canada studying here, building a life here, building an adulthood here. It means your story is also a Canadian story. Your family story of coming from elsewhere and building a life in this country is also a Canadian story. And whether you choose to sing that story or dance or write or sculpt or whatever your preferred artistic expression is, however you choose to tell that story, it's a story that needs to be heard because your stories are the stories of what it means to be Canadian in the 21st century. So I invite you to listen to your parents, to do your work, but to make time for creative work and to build your imaginations. And I hope you will all dream really big dreams for your futures. Thank you. Mm -hmm.